Whenever we form this DAP, which is a DHAP, you know, we can convert this DAP and make the glycerol aldehyde phosphate. And how do we do that? There's a special enzyme located there, which is called triose. It's a triose phosphate isomerous. It's an isomerous. Basically, what it, do, it is doing is that it is, it is rearranging the phosphate group and putting it into the third positions. And when you do that, with this enzyme, which is a triose phosphate isomerous, you make a GAP or GAP, which is a glycerol aldehyde phosphate. That's what you make right here. All right? When you form a gap, right, what is going to happen to this gap? This gap is going to see something called glycerol aldehyde, right? Let's say glycerol. So you say glycerol aldehyde, right? 3 phosphate. And you see a dehydrogenesis enzyme. That's what you're saying, all right? So whenever you see a glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogen, what do they do? Basically, what they do is here, this is very important, because this is where the oxidative reaction is taking place. You're going to use this end, but this end requires what? It requires NAD+, plus, guys, and this NAD+, plus what? It is going to reduce to form NADH plus H+. Plus. That's what it does. And this is a donor, right? Because this is, a, this, is a, this is what is going to lose an electrons later, all right? So this one right here, you see this right here? This NADH which has gained the electrons, right? That's what it is. Now, because NADH, the plus, that has, what, it has what? This NAD plus has gained the electrons and which has become the NADH because this NADH, later was, this becomes donor, right? It becomes electron donor later. That's what it's gonna become. Now, at the same time, when they are doing this, right? In the process, what are they? In the process, what they did is they also, like, you know, accumulated it one inorganic phosphate here. That's what he did in that process, glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenesis. This NADH, NADH that is formed over here, later, you know, this can go to the electron transport chain to make ATP. And one NADH is equal to like, you know, three ATP, just letting you know. Now, what is this compound they form here? Because remember, they put a phosphate group into it. Because we don't want to forget there's already a phosphate group right here. Right? On the carbon number third positions over there too. The same enzyme right here, right? This is the same enzyme with a glycerol aldehyde, right? Like three, let's say, the glycerol aldehyde. Let me write down here. It's called glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme, right? And obviously you pick NAD plus and NADH plus H, plus, right? And you do a phosphate group. So there's already on the carbon number, there's a phosphate here, right? On three positions, but also because you added inorganic phosphate here, so you add in, added inorganic phosphate in the carbon number one positions here, PO4, 3 minus, so you become what? One and three. So you want to become this carbon, you become, let me write down here. This is compound, it's called one, three, right? Bis glycerate. That's what you become. Very, very important this one. So from your glycerol aldehyde, glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate, you make uh, 1,3-phosphoglycerate with this enzyme, which is called glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme, all right? And this means in a separate position, carbon 1 and 3, you make what? Carbon 1 and 3, which are separately, and that's what we call them this, right? Now, through this so far, if we, if we look back, how many your glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate we have made two. There's one here, there's one here too. That means how many we made one 3 phosphate glycerol? We made two of them too. All right. So now, what, are you gonna, what is going to happen with this one 3 bisphosphate glycerol? Now, let's bring this and put it right here. So this compound you see right here, which has carbon number four here, PO3 minus, and then carbon number one. The help. So this is one 3 bis one, one and three bis bi, uh, bisphosphate glycerol is there, right? This can go. Two way, all right? Remember, one three bisphosphoglycerate. You know, it can go to the red blood cells. And remember, red blood cells does not have a mitochondria, right? It doesn't have mitochondria. So, you know what is going to happen? But they do. They have to use something, right? And so, what do, what do, what they do is that this this guy, the one three bisphosphoglycerate, 
they can go to red blood cell. Red blood can take it, and then they can do a mutase activity. All right, mutase is basically moving the carbon molecules. That's what he's going to do. So when in the red blood cell, when he does mutase activity, you know there's going to be look, there's going to be look three carbons right here. All right, again, PO four three minus is on the carbon number. This is one, two, three. Right, but what what it does is that it moves. You know, it moves this phosphor the one positions and put it in the two positions. That's what it does. So when you put phosphate with this mutase in the red blood cells, let's make this as a red blood cells. You know, what do we make this compound? This compound is called, all right, this compound is called 2,3, okay, by BPG, you can simply say, which is basically 2,3 by phosphoglycerate, or you can simply say this is called 2,3 DPG, which basically means is that, you know, 2,3 diphosphoglycerate. This is what you make in red blood cells. And this is very, very important. The reason why it is very important is because, you know, 2,3 DPG, they have a higher affinity, higher affinity to bind to hemoglobin, okay, for oxygen. So they, so what they do is that, what does that mean? What, what does that mean is that they can do, you know, their high affinity for hemoglobin, right? So what they do is that they can do a cross link of the beta chains of the hemoglobin. When they do a cross link, the cross link for the beta, beta chains of hemoglobin, what is going to happen? You know, oxygens will, what, release out and go to the peripheral tissue. That's what is it. That's how this uh, two, three DPZ play a role. Okay. Now, now after this, what is going to happen here is that this two, three DPZ also, you know, and then there, you know, and that enzyme is what. If you the phosphatase enzyme, if there's a phosphatase enzyme, then you can break down into, like you know, this compound. And we have discussed about that. Now, that is, this is for red blood cells. No, let's come back. Let's come here. This is what one, three. Best phosphoglycerin, right? There is a one enzyme here they're going to see here, you know. This is the first step where you generate ATP. And you have to remember, what they do is that, you know, because so far we did what investment phase, and this is where one we made NADH, but this is the first phase that we're going to use, we're going to make it. So what they do is that, all right, there's right here, okay, what they do is that there's ADP here, and then they generate ATP here, all right? And how do you generate? Generate ATPs. Remember, what is it? There's one and three. There's a phosphate group, right? They'll take. Let me just make this here. They'll take one phosphate from this compound right here and make this way. You just you just attach one phosphate in the ADP and you make ATP. And which is doing it? Which enzyme do? Which is called phospho. Okay, glycerate kinase. All right. This is called phosphoglycerate kinase, which is basically what it is making what it is making the first year atp this is the first atp that you make here right and this pathway or this process does not involve electron transfer chain so we call this process is called like you know substrate level of phosphorylation this is called substrate okay level of phosphorylation right that's what you this is very very important right here all right now, after you make the phosphoglycerin, now what do you, you only have a, this carbon in the PO4, three minus right here, right? Now, what is this compound? After the we make up, what is this compound? This is called, it, it is no longer called 1,3 bisphosphoglycerin because this is 1,3. This is called, because there's always going to be, this is called 3 phosphoglycerin because only carbon number. So we say 3 phosphoglycerin. All right, this will become three phosphoglycerin this compound. After this three phosphoglycerin, what is going to happen when we talk about? You know, this guy is going to go something called mutase activity again here. This is a mutase activity, which basically means is that this enzyme called, because this is a phosphoglycerate, this phosphoglycerate mutase enzyme, that's going to move this carbon number from three position to two position and make, like now you're going to see this phosphate group in the carbon number two right here, okay? And this is, what is this called? We call them up. Whenever you see it, we call them up. Let's write them here. Two phosphoglycerate. That's what you see. All right? So again, from the one three bisphosphoglycerate, right? With the phosphoglycerate kinase, you generate ATP. Then when you make that, you make what? You make a three, right? Basically, you make a three phosphoglycerate. 
right? And from the three phosphoglycerate with the mutase enzyme, which, which basically moves the carbon number from three to two, then you make a two phosphoglycerate. That's what you make, right? So now for the two phosphoglycerate, what is going to happen here is that, you know, okay, let's just make this, all right? What is going to happen here is that there is going to be a one enzyme here, which is called you know, less enzymes, you know, and what it does is that, you know, it's sort of like, you know, you know, it, what it does is that, you know, it, it, it sort of like convert this, like, you know, like to phosphoglycerate and makes it like, you know, enolase, enolase compound, which is basically, which is called, and there is going to be phosphate right here, all right, but it, the phosphate is about to leave right now, and also you lose water in that too. All right, and this is what is called your phospho-enolyl pyruvate. That's what you make. Or you can simply call it PAP. And this is done by enolase enzymes. All right, and, okay, we have to make another compound right here. This is called phospho-enolyl phospho -enol pyruvate, or PAP, right? And last thing right here, which is going to be my reaction right here. Is the last step of that, and before we go to the last step of that, you know, this enolase enzymes, you know, uh, there is also something called fluoride. The fluoride can actually inhibit these enzymes. Fluoride can inhibit these enolase enzymes, and if you inhibit this, you cannot longer the you cannot run the glycolysis pathway. Okay, sometimes they use this to estimate the glucose in labs, all right. And also, one more thing, you know, this glucose 6 uh, phosphate, uh, this three head, this can be inhibited by you know, arsenic poisoning. Just let me just quickly mention it. Arsenic can actually inhibit this this pathway all right so fluoride here fluoride can inhibit okay, let's just write down f l u o r i d fluoride can inhibit this pathway which is you know this enzymes right now now after that you know there's the last pathway here you know what do we do basically look one two three this is what this is mine one here two here three you know what happens is that this enzyme and this is a this is another step where we make ATP, and this is what we're going to make ATP, ADP, and then we convert into ATP. And what is this phosphate? Remember this phosphate, the two position. We're going to take that phosphate right here from this, and then we're going to make ATP. All right. And this is done by these enzymes, which is irreversible, and this is called pyruvate kinase. All right. Pyruvate cancer, cancer. And this is the Right? This is also another substrate level of phosphorylated because the electron transport change is not involved here. And then look, this is my three carbon molecules, which is my pyruvate right here. All right? This is my pyruvate compound right here. All right? So this is, this is the one pyruvate. But remember, there's another GA3P2. Like we took this, this pathway and then we make one. But there's also one way from here. It's going to do the same directions and we make what? Well, all together we make a two pyruvate. We make the two moles of pyruvate. That's what we're going to make, all right? So, so basically you're going to have two phosphorylated and pyruvate. You're going to have all of this is going to be two, all right? Because you're making all of them in two, all right? And end result is that you're going to make two pyruvate compounds. One more thing. This pyruvate kinase, it is also highly regulated enzyme. Because, you know, you know what can increase the activity of this of pyruvokinase, look at this enzyme right here. This guy, phosphorylated one, they can actually stimulate this because that way. This is why, because if this is, they can stimulate this enzyme, so that way you know you can draw, you can run the glycolysis faster. All right, so that's what we call them. This is why we call them feed forward pathway. All right, so right here, we generate ATP right here. Right, so we generate how many? So, so that here, what, there's going to be two ATP here, right? Because two ATP and here. Where is it another here? So there's a four ATP we generated here, right? But remember, we already use ATP in this one, the first reaction here. To run from the glucose to glucose six phosphate, we use one ATP. And then from the furco six phosphate to fructose one six phosphate, we use one ATP, right? So even though our like you know gross ATP was four, because we already invested two, we just subtract four minus two. So your net ATP is what? Net ATP, let's write down your net ATP is going to be. 2 ATP that you make. All right. So in the glycolysis, you make 2 ATP. That's how the glycolysis runs. And what is going to happen with the glycolysis right here is that, all right, glycolysis can go two pathways from here. All right. One is called anaerobic, which basically means is that there's no like 
oxygen is there or the limited oxygen is supplied. Like for instance, you know, in red blood cells, right, there's oxygen, but there's no mitochondria there, right? So in that case, what is going to happen here? Or let's say in the anaerobic conditions, what is going to happen here is that they'll make lactate or lactic acid. You can simply say lactate or lactic acid. Because this enzyme called your LDH, which is a lactic dehydrogen enzyme, which basically use, look at this NADH, what do I mean NAD? Use this NADH right here. Look, let me erase this, and this is going to be what? Glycerolic phosphate. This is, you'll just write it on GAP for you guys. I'll already write it down here, right? What they do is that, you know, they use NADH plus H plus and then make NADA. So this is how, you know, you make lactate. And even in, you know, uh, the working skeletal muscles, all right, because, you know, they also grow on the path, uh, pathway, anaerobic pathway, and they will make lactic acid. And this lactate, you know, later, you know, what is going to happen? Lactate can, you know, come to the liver, and liver can actually use this lactate to make glucose. And whenever you use, you know, to make glucose from the non-carbohydrate sources, we call them a gluconeogenesis. I'll talk about that too, right, in a gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis video. But in the aerobic phase, when you, when the presence of oxygen, you know, Oxygen, prince oxygen, you know, it can run to the Krebs cycle or citric cycle. And from the citric cycle, it can go to the electron transport chain to generate ATP, right? So from this pyruvate, like, you know, what is going to happen? They can go to the mitochondria of the, like, you know, the Krebs cycles. We can run the Krebs cycles in the mitochondria, and then from there, we make more energy, more, more ATP, more NADH, right? And then we can use that for the oxidative phosphorylation to generate ATP, all right? So now, this is the pathway of a glycolysis, guys. And as I said, this is one of the most understood pathways, all right? And this is one of the most important metabolism pathway too. It's really important to have a good understanding of this, all right? But there is a, there are three steps that are very, very important though. From the glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, which is the role of glohexokinase and glucokinase. And the other one is the fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, all right? And that is what? That is by the PFK1, which is the red limiting steps. And the last step, which is the, what? the PEP. This is also very important. And also, you should know about this role of NADH, right? This one. Because these guys can go to the electron transport chain to make ATP, right? Now, I think, guys, you know, for our case, for our glycolysis, this is all I have for you guys, all right? So I hope that I was able to make it clear to you guys. And thank you. Thank you for watching. And uh, please, if you like the lectures, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment, make sure you share. And, you know, good luck. All right. Thank you.